Hi, in this module, I'm going to talk about a general strategy for performing probabilistic inference in Bayesian networks. So recall that a Bayesian network consists of a set of random variables, for example, cold, allergies, cough, and HEI. And then the Bayesian network defines a direct acyclic graph over these random variables that capture the qualitative dependencies between the variables. For example, cough is caused by cold or allergies, GIs is caused by allergies alone. Quantitatively, the Bayesian network specifies a set of local conditional distributions of each variable xi given the parents of i. And so in this example, I would have probability of c times probability of a times probability of h given c and a times probability of i given a. And then when I multiply all of these probabilities uh, together, then I get, by definition, the joint uh, dif probability distribution over all of the random variables. In this case, I have a joint distribution over C, A, H, and I. So you can think about the uh, Bayesian network as defining this joint distribution which is a probabilistic database where you can answer questions about this database. For example, what is the probability of C given H equals one and I equals one? Generally, you have a Bayesian network. Some of the variables you observe as evidence, for example, e, H and I in this case, and another set of variables you are interested in, which are the query variables. So that where Q would be C here, and what we want to produce is the probability of the query variable's condition on the evidence. Formally, this is a probability of q equals q for each of the values of little q. So the overarching strategy that we're going to take for performing inference and Bayesian networks is to convert them into Markov networks, which we discussed inference for. So recall, we're going to walk through this example. Um, so recall that the joint distribution over the variables here is equal to the, simply the product of the local conditional distributions by definition of the Bayesian number. Okay. But these local conditional distributions are non-negative quantities, so they can be interpreted as factors in the factor graph. So let's uh, draw the factor graph. So here we have the same set of the variables. Um, for every variable, we have um, a factor corresponding to its local conditional distribution. We have probability of C, um, probability of A, probability of H given C and A, which connects C, A, and H, and then probability of I given so in the factor graph representation, these are simply functions. This is a function that takes depends on C and H, and the factor graph doesn't really care that it's a local distribution. So now remember, in a Markov network, we take a factor graph, and we multiply all the factors together, and we divide by the normalization constant to get the product to sum to 1. But notice that in this case, that the normalization constant is exactly one because we had this equality from the definition of the Bayesian network. So Z has to be one in this case. So the Bayesian network is just a Markov network with the normalization constant one. And that means we can take any Bayesian network and reinterpret it as a Markov network and answer all sorts of marginal queries. For example, we can ask for the probability of A, we can ask for the probability of H, and so on. Um, but I'll just remind you that a single factor connects all the parents. So notice that there are two edges, C to H, A to H here, but in the factor graph representation, you should connect um, the parents and the child into one. Okay, so there's only one thing missing from this picture, which is that often in Bayesian networks, you want to condition on evidence. So let's condition on H and I. 
To do this, we're going to define a Markov network over the non-conditioned variables. So in this case, that's going to be C equals C, A equals A, condition on H equals 1 and I equals 1. And what I'm going to do is we're are just going to substitute the values to, of the evidence into the factors themselves. So here is a factor graph. I have only C and A left, and P of C and P of A is the same. And now we have this factor that depends on C and A, but H is equal to one, so I don't need to represent H as a variable. And here, the same I equals one, so I don't need to represent I as a variable. So now I take these four factors and I multiply them all together, and I get that is this factor graph. And now I need to normalize by one over Z. It's a different Z now. In this case, Z is not one because I'm conditioning on evidence. And in particular, um, Z is going to be the probability of uh, the evidence. And you can see this because this is a joint, dis uh, this is a conditional distribution, and conditional distribution is equal to the joint distribution divided by the marginal of the thing that you're conditioning on. So Z has to be equal to the marginal of the evidence. But nonetheless, this is a Markov network. And now again, we can run any inference algorithm we like over this Markov network, for example, give sampling. So let me actually do that in this uh, demo here. So here is the medical diagnosis. We define variables C, A, H, and I. We're going to condition on H equals 1, I equals 1. And we're interested in the marginal probability of C. And we're going to run Gibbs sampling. So um, Gibbs sampling, remember, is going to take arbitrary uh, factor graph or Markov network, and it's going to go through an assignment and reassign each variable one at a time, and it's going to accumulate these counts. So let me speed this up a little bit and say I'm going to do a thousand steps at a time, and now you can see that these counts should converge to the right, it's about uh, 0.13, should converge to the right uh, probability of C condition on H and I. So then we're kind of done. We have a Bayesian network. We condition on evidence. We form this reduced uh, factor graph uh, or Markov network. And then we just run Gibbs sampling. So in some sense, we are done. But I want to push this a little bit further and show how we can leverage the structure of Bayesian networks to optimize things. So let's take another example where we're now conditioning on H. Okay, so we're conditioning on H, so let's go through the uh, motions here. We're going to define a Markov network on the, um, the variables that we didn't condition on. Condition on H equals 1, and that's going to be equal to just the product of all the local conditional distributions where we've substituted now H equals 1, and now the normalization constant is the probability of the evidence. And now I can ask the question, uh, what is the probability of C equals one given H equals one? This is something that I can just go and um, compute using Gibbs sampling. But the question is, can we reduce the Markov network before running inference? Because if we can get the Markov network to be a little bit smaller, then hopefully inference can be uh, a bit faster. So the answer is yes. And um, we're going to show this by doing a little bit of algebra here. So here is um, this uh, Bayesian network again, where I've conditioned on H. So now let me compute the marginal distribution where I've marginalized out I. So here I don't have I anymore. But I can express this in terms of this probability of C, A, and I given where I simply sum out all possible values of okay, So this is just the definition of marginal, um, not marginal probability. So now I can, um, using the definition of the Bayesian network, 
I can rewrite the joint dis, uh, distribution in terms of local conditional distribution. Okay, so, and now I um, make an observation, which is that summing over i, but none of this actually depends on i except for this last uh, factor. So what I can do is uh, push all of this stuff out or equivalently push the summation inside. So now it's wrapped uh, tightly around this uh, P of I given A. Now, what is this? By definition of local conditional distributions, this is exactly one, so it gets dropped. So now I have this nicer form. But not only is it smaller, Let's try to understand what it is. It's, this is the probability of C, probability of A, probability of H equals one given C and A. So it's as if this variable I didn't exist at all. So this is a, a general idea behind Bayesian networks, which is that you can throw away any unobserved leaves before running in. So this is very powerful because it connects marginalization over variables, which is generally an algebraic operation, involves a lot of hard work, with removal, which is a graph operation, which is more intuitive and trivial in this case. So in general, marginalization is hard, but when they are unobserved leaves of a Bayesian network, it is trivial, you just remove it. So here is another type of structure we can exploit, which is actually not specific to Bayesian networks. Um, it shows up more generally in Markov networks. So let's take another example here. We're gonna condition on I this time. So here we're gonna define this Markov network where let's just write down uh, this query that we're interested in. We're interested in C equals C given I equals one here and expanding it out uh, based on the definition of marginal probability um, i can put in probability of c a and h where i sum over all possible values of a and h so i'm marginalizing out a and h here and by definition of the bayesian network i can replace this with the local conditional uh, distributions and now using the same trick as before i notice that H is an unobserved leaf, so I can actually marginalize out H, and this factor disappears. Graphically, this H disappears. And now I am left with this um, Bayesian network, where um, notice that the only thing that um, depends on C is this P of C. So I can actually pull it out and rewrite it as follows. And now I have P of C times some mess. And the nice thing in this case is that this mess is just a constant because it doesn't depend on C. And moreover, because P of C is a distribution and this left-hand side is a distribution, this constant is actually one. So because C graphically, C and this AI uh, subgraph is actually disconnected, which means that I can simply remove this part. So generally, I can throw away any disconnected components before running inference. Okay, so in general, let's summarize here. We've tackled the problem how to perform probabilistic inference in Bayesian networks by reducing the problem to inference in Markov network. So um, to prepare the Markov network, we're gonna first condition on the evidence. So this is tantamount to substituting the values of the evidence into the factors. Then we throw away any unobserved leaves, in this case H. We throw away any disconnected components. So these two are just optimizations, which are totally optional, but it'll often save you some work. Now we define a Markov network over the remaining factors. And now we just have a factor uh, graph where we can now run your favorite inference algorithm. So in the case it's very simple, as it is the case here, you can just do it manually, 
or if it's uh, what's remaining is more complicated, then you can do something like sampling. And that's the end.